What's up? And we're back again, Hashtag Nation. Today, we're going to be exploring the defensive side of the ball. We're going to take a look at Bobby Babich as the new defensive coordinator for the Buffalo Bills. Make sure you hit that like button. Go down and grab the link tree. We got a bunch of socials there, TikTok, Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Ryan joins me again. Make sure you hit that subscribe button to join Hashtag Nation. Let's go take a look at the defense. You know, we got a we got a Matt Milano esque uh, guy coming in as defensive. I told you, they bring up Anessa back, man. That's a that's a dangerous front line for the for the uh, the, the the female fans of the Buffalo Bills with <laughs> Milano and Babich. And if they bring up Anessa back, they still got Poyer on the roster. Like, man, there's you know there's a got... lot of reasons for for the for the ladies to tune in to the to the Buffalo Bills this season. I'm gonna say this though: if if you're in a bar and Milano, Babich, and Epineza walk in. Just pay for your drink. If you're and leave. a guy, I mean, over. if you're a guy, pack it in. You better move to another bar. <laughs> pack it in because your your night's over. <laughs> Come on now, dog. Come on, man. <laughs> He's just like, well, I guess I'm going somewhere else now. I'm gonna grab some wings and go home. Uh, but I think, like, like we talked about it on the previous episode, million dollar question is: Is Babbage going to call plays? Yeah. You know, you talk about a guy who who came in. You know, he came in with his father, obviously. He coached the secondary. He got here the same year, the same year, I believe. Correct me if I'm wrong on this. He got here the same year that they decided to bring two guys, who one guy who was a failed slot corner, other guy who was toiling away in Cleveland. I think you guys know him, Poyer and Hyde, mm -hmm. and brought them here and it made those guys all pros. You know, he was he was the secondary, so he was a safeties coach. And then he ended up making the transition two years ago to linebacker. And we saw an improvement of Matt Milano's game and Tremaine Edmonds is one year that he was with him. And then you just started to see what Terrell Bernard was able to do this year. I and Dorian I do, Williams and yes. Terrell Hodson and like yeah, yeah. Yeah, you started to see how all these guys were able to do it. So his communication throughout the defense, I think, is gonna be paramount, number one. Number two. Having a guy that you trust like that and almost like, do you think he's going to act like a buffer if he is the play caller? Do you think, because he was here when Frazier was here. Now he's here with McDermott. So he already knows there's a clear difference in play calling between the two guys. Like if they brought in a new DC, he hasn't seen the difference of what McDermott likes, what he doesn't like in certain situations. The fact that Babbage was here, do you think that's going to be kind of like a tipping point for him to call the plays? Because he knows what McDermott likes and what he doesn't like from, from what, the time when Frazier was here. I mean, and don't and don't forget, he coached under McDermott in Carolina. Too. Yes. So I mean, yeah. they have a long-standing familiarity. I mean, Absolutely. it's odd to say long-standing for a guy that's you know forty, getting ready to turn like just turned forty, right? It's familiarity yeah. with a head coach, but there is familiarity there. I think yeah. if Sean McDermott was going to give up play calling responsibility, it would be to someone like Babbage who. Yeah. It's so ingrained in the defense that McDermott runs that McDermott knows it's going to be the way he wants it, right? Yeah. I think the other thing to go along with Babich is, you know, if if you take what the article that Tyler Dunn wrote earlier in the season ab about McDermott is one of the things he struggles with is connecting with the players on a personal level. And one of the things that he... You know, I don't know if the word resent is the right word, but one of the things that he seems to envy about some of the position coaches is that they have that ability. Yeah. It seems as though Babbage has that ability to, to connect with players in a different level than what Sean McDermott. Sean McDermott's a tactician. He's X's and O's, and he's go out and execute guy, right? Like yeah. Babbage is the guy that's like, hey, you didn't make that right read. Like, let's talk about it. Yeah. You know, McDermott's the guy, you know, McDermott's the guy where the joke always came with like Michael Jordan and Magic Johnson. Like they, they can't coach because they can't understand why guys can't just go out and do it the way they want to do it. Right. Like <laughs> just, just go out and do it. Like just go execute. Babbage <laughs> is kind of like the, well, what did you see? You know, why, why didn't you do it the way that we've taught you to do it? Oh, okay. You know, whatever, like connect on that more of a personal level. Yeah. Um, so it'll be interesting because they did ask uh, Brandon Bean about that down at the Senior Bowl, and he did say that they're still trying to figure that out between McDermott and Babbage, who's going to call the plays. It'll be interesting to see um, what comes of that. But again, I think because he coached under McDermott in Carolina, he's now coached under McDermott since 2017, since he came on. Um, McDermott obviously respects him, obviously thinks he's good at what he does. If he's going to relinquish play calling duties, it will be to a guy like Babbage, not someone from the outside coming in um, and then trying to run their own defense. He's gonna, this is going to be a Sean McDermott defense. 
whether mm-hmm. Babbage is calling the plays or McDermott's calling the plays, it's going to be Sean's defense. And I think that's oh, yeah. that's the most important part of this to McDermott. Um, and then, you know, the pragmatist in me that we've talked about this too is like it's difficult to make Babbage into a meat shield if everybody knows he's not the one calling plays so if the defense doesn't do so well and McDermott's looking for a scapegoat it makes it very True. difficult to turn Babbage into that if it's like well he's your defensive coordinator but he's not even calling plays like how can you pin this on him I think there's some of that that's going to come into play too I think it giving given what Babbage went through as far as his you know coming through with his coaching I think McDermott kind of looks upon, even though he's nine years younger than him. Or wait, how old's McDermott now? Is he forty? Is he fifty something? Is he forty nine? Something like that? Yeah, it's a good, that's a it's a good question. Um, McDermott is. I'll, I'll look it up. McDermott right. is. But like, it's like if he leaves, it, it's almost like one of those things. Like you always want to play the the backstage, you know, investigator in some of these. You know, he, his father was there, so his father might have been the meat shield for Bobby when he was there. But now his, his dad's not there, and he's been doing. You know, standing on his own two feet, doing what he has to do. He's had some successful position groups. It's almost like, and you said with that prior uh, experience that he had in Carolina, it's almost like, okay, I'm grooming you to be like me. Mm -hmm. So Babbage may have that connection with the players, but he may be more like McDermott than we think, which is why he would be like one other reason why he would be willing to, you know, relinquish defensive play callers. Plus, you're you're right, you're 100 right. This is how this this is how the business side of the NFL works. Is the fact is that is a meat shield. All right, you're calling plays. The minute I don't like you calling plays, I'm going to take it over. You know, he took it over from Leslie Frazier, who is yeah. one of the most respected defensive play callers in the league. So, I mean, and, and we saw that happen. So that's one of those things where I, I think I always hearken back to the fact of um, Bill Parcells' start of his career. He was always friendly. He had a great connection with the players. Yeah. And I remember Bill Belichick telling a story. He said, listen, if I make it through this, because they were talking about him getting fired. He said, if I make it through this, I'm not going to be as friendly with the players. I'm going to demand more of them. They're not going to like me, but that's going to be okay because we're going to win. It could be one of those things where it's an us versus him type mentality where, okay, Sean, you could be envious of that, but there's guys that will now listen to Babbage and what he is saying, what he's preaching, what he wants over McDermott. And if they start enjoying success, they're going to listen to him more. Right. So it's going to be very interesting to see how that dynamic plays out. Um, McDermott's, so McDermott's going to be 50 next month. So okay. For, for the record. So, all right. Five. So like, so now you got a, you got a first time defensive coordinator. That is something that maybe calculated by McDermott. He has something to, you know, put his, you know, like you said, the meat shield. I hate bringing that up, but it's, it's, yeah. it's part of the business of the NFL. If the defense is struggling first eight games of 2024, you know, who's going to be focused on if he has play calling duties. So that well, might be one of those things where he does. This is, this is Mc, really McDermott's first opportunity to start building his coaching tree, too, right? Yeah. Like, like, you know, Brady's not going to be the McDermott coaching tree, right? Brady's a second-time offensive coordinator. He was a hot commodity when it came when he left Carolina and decided yeah. to go to LSU for a year, right? Like, don't forget, Joe Brady has interviewed for head coaching positions already before yeah. he got under McDermott. So Babich is probably the first opportunity that Sean has to create his coaching tree. And that starts to get into legacy type stuff. And if you're, you know, if you're not going to win the big one, like you've got to have a coaching tree that kind of cements your legacy as one of the best defensive play callers of all time, which, you know, you can, you know, another decade of sustained success from Sean McDermott. And he's probably in that conversation. That's how good these defenses have been with little talent in Buffalo. Um, And I think that's part of this too, is, you know, we can, we can, again, joke about the meat shield and we can, you know, be, be, you know, pessimistic about his worldview towards things. But I think from an optimistic standpoint, I think there is that legacy building that Sean McDermott very much is is cognizant of. He really wants to win, but everybody who gets into coaching gets into coaching because they want to build that legacy and be thought of as one of the best to ever do it. And part of that is building that tree and start to get those branches that come off of that. And Babbage is his first opportunity to say, this guy came up with me through Carolina. I brought him on to the bills when, you know, when I, as soon as I joined the staff and now he's a defensive coordinator, now he's going to go interview for head coaching positions. And if he's successful, then that's, that's a feather in my cap as, as his head coach. Is it, we're t- 
<laughs> we, just, we just went from meat shields to you, you know, having McDermott thank Babbage for his help when he's, you know, in the Hall of Fame induction. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, thanks, I appreciate you. <laughs> or or Babbage thanking McDermott during his Hall of Fame speech, right? <laughs> Dude, like Sean McDermott, he's like, oh, everything I do, I everything I've done is because of Sean McDermott. You know, like yeah, like you said, that's going to be a huge thing. I think not a lot of people realize the fact that he came up through McDermott. He learned through McDermott, and he's in a coaching family. So, yeah, the amount of pedigree that this kid has is going to be good moving forward. And you know what? With with the things learning from McDermott, as far as being able to adjust when your best horses aren't out there, and still putting together a successful defensive game plan, is going to be huge for Babbage going forward and how he's going to def- call, call defensive play calling, have defensive play calling. So I just like how there's going to be, we might see a few new wrinkles with Babbage there versus when McDermott was there. You know what I mean? Like yeah. nobody has anything but good things to say about McDermott as a defensive play caller. Guy has a feel for the game. Yep. He's able to do stuff with duct tape and bubble gum as he did this year. But if, he needs this more as a head coach because he needs to oversee more things. He just can't focus on the defense because you lose the flow of the game when you're on one side of the ball. So you yeah. got to have a, a cognizant. And and with with Brady and Babbage, we know they got to play complementary football. Mm-hmm. So maybe these two guys talk quite a bit off. I mean, I, we know they talk, but maybe they talk more off the field and have more of a connection than when Brady and McDermott were the ones calling offense and defense. So. We'll have to see how that goes. Well, and, and again, I think some of that comfort level is for Sean is he know again, he knows Babbage is going to call the defense he wants to run. He's, he's of the same viewpoint, the same philosophy, yeah. the same scheme. So I can relinquish play calling duties to him, focus on being a head coach because I know that that side of the ball is taken care of in, in a yeah. satisfactory way. Right. And I think that's, it's going to be interesting to see how it goes. Um, the last question i want to ask you mario how much of that move the babbage move how much of that do we have to thank the miami dolphins for for Ooh. interviewing babbage for their defensive coordinator position like what like would this move have been made if babbage wasn't from all accounts the top option in miami as the defensive coordinator that's very interesting because we we talked about it off the air about you you you're just gonna let him walk you're just gonna let right. him go uh, I firmly believe that they did try to match whatever Miami was was thinking of offering them. Um, and that might have been the caveat. Like, can you let me call plays? Can I call plays? Sure. Like, they're going to let me do that. So it might have been one of those things where Miami wanted to have a little bit of a youth movement. Who would know Allen? I mean, you always got to take care of your division first. So who would know Allen better than, you know, Babbage in trying to take care of what Allen does best than Babbage? Yeah. So I think it was one of the, it might've been a legacy thing too. You know, he might've been like, he might've talked to his dads and like, listen, you know, it's, it's a dumpster fire down there in Miami. Don't go down there. Yeah. Like you're not going to have a very long sustain, su- sustained success. Plus the fact is, I mean, Paul and I talked about this on the, on, on, on the post game. One of the days you looked at what Miami did to Denver. Now everyone wants to talk about 70 points. You drop 70 points on a team. Tua was in the game start of the fourth quarter when they were already up 42. You don't need to be there what that game did to that staff because that resonates throughout the NFL. Like you're still throwing up points on this team Mm -hmm. and you're already up. Like there's an unwritten rule about that. It's like when you're up 10 runs in baseball and you're stealing like, no, stop doing that. You know what I mean? You get a sour taste in a lot of people's mouths. So if they were to continue that trend with Babbage there, would he be hireable by anybody else after that? That might well, be something I think, that was taken into consideration. I think that's a good point. I think what speaks more to that is how, how dysfunctional is that is that coaching staff? Yeah, they they just hired Fangio and they just made him like the highest paid defensive coordinator in the NFL, and then they just let him walk away for nothing. Yeah. Like he wasn't fired. There was a mutual parting of ways, yeah. and then he just goes and takes the defensive coordinator position in Philadelphia. Like that's not a normal thing that happens <laughs> if all is well in 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 a coaching staff, right? Like that's a clear that's a clear difference in dichotomy between the way that McDaniel wants to run things and the way that Fangio thinks things should be run as someone who's been in the NFL for a very long time. And if he was just like, Hey, you got a ton of talent on this defense. We're on the cusp of potentially being a really good football team. I'm good, man. Like I don't want (laughs) to do this anymore and just walk (laughs) away. Like that's, that's, 
that's a big deal. And I think that to your point, Babbage probably looked at that, talked to his dad and his dad's like, I don't know what's going on down there. Cause I'm retired. I've been retired for the last couple of years, but that's not something that I would get myself into. Cause that's just, that's just weird, man. Like it's weird that, 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 that that's how that played out in Miami. Yeah. And I think it's definitely something to your point. Like, could I be tainted if I go there for a couple, a year or two? Um, is, is there the risk of me becoming, you know, tainted goods and then I yeah. can't, I can't find a job for a while. Absolutely. And at the age that he's at, he's, at, he, he's kind of like in between there. You know what I mean? Everyone wants these young coaches. He's not yeah. the youngest of coaches, but he's, he's not the oldest guy. Yeah. That's what yeah. I'm saying. He's, like, he's 40. So I'm a man. I'm 40. I'm a man. He... <laughs> he's a man. He's 40. I can't follow that. That's the end of the episode. Make sure you hit that like and subscribe button on the way out guys. We're out of here.